Hey up and uh, welcome to the video and that what you've just seen that series of shots was an absolute bonus this morning because I've not planned to come out and take shots in the fog or mist whatever you want to call it. I got up at five o'clock this morning had a look outside and the sky was beautifully clear and I thought we're in for a possible sunrise here so uh, we'd planned to come out to this location and uh, we're in ancient woodland and very nice it is. It's a part of Sherwood Forest that I've not been to and I should have come here before and I'm definitely going to come back again because uh, autumn here will be uh, absolutely amazing. So the misty shots were a bonus now let's get into the reason for shooting this video. Everything but the kitchen sink. Should we bring out all our lenses? That's what I'm talking about. Sometimes when I go on a shoot, if I'm doing a lot of walking, hiking, uh, climbing up uh, places, I sometimes want to reduce the amount of weight that I'm carrying. So I'll leave one or two lenses behind just to make it more comfortable on a long walk. What I sometimes find is though that I see a shot and oh, I've not bought that lens with me. It's a bit of a fail. So in this video, I'm just going to explore approaching the process of photography a little bit different. And I've got all my lenses today. So I've got 60 mil macro lens. I've got 14 to 24 big eye. I've got 24 to 70, super reliable, super popular lens. If you're going to get a lens when you first start photography, you've got to get the 24 to 70 because it is so versatile. And I've also got the uh, 100 to 400 as well. So I've bought all my lenses and I'm going to see how viable it is to use all the lenses nothing unusual with that but normally when I come out I will explore look around scope up a composition pop a lens on nine times out of ten I've got the 24 to 70 on and take the shot what I'm going to do in this video today I'm going to look at things a little bit different so I'm going to adopt a little bit of a different thought process to take shots today. So I'm standing in quite a, it's quite a wide open space of woodland this, it's really nice. Lots of trees dotted around, lots of dead bushes. And what I want to do, I've stopped, I've obviously stopped in this position here. I want to consider all the lenses as I'm walking. So I need to think macro. What have I got down in front of me on the floor? Think wide angle. Yeah, what can I bring in that's got good foreground that would fit in a shot? And we've got the mid ground, 24 to 70. Then we've got obviously telephoto, 100 to 400. So that's the way I'm going to think. So where I'm standing at the minute, okay, I think we can pretty much rule out a macro shot. I cannot see anything particular. Oh, there's a bit of a leaf down there. That might work. Actually, there's a fresh leaf just here. That might be an okay. It's fresh, it's life, it's spring. You wouldn't know it with the weather. So that might be a macro shot. Mid-ground, no. The mid-ground's very messy. We've got dead. Um, foliage, really awful looking the mid-ground is. We can write off wide angle because again there's nothing strong in foreground uh, for this shot. But telephoto, particularly because we've still got this mist hanging around, telephoto is, uh, yeah, that is going to work. I can see a number of compositions I can take with telephoto. So let's look at this shot here. We've got this tree bending. Let's just pop some video on. We've got a tree bending to the right and that's quite nice. I'm going to take that. I'm going to take another alternative shot of it as well. So at this point we've got a macro shot. 
We haven't got a wide shot, we haven't got a mid-range shot, but we have got a telephoto at this part of this woodland. So I'm going to take the macro shot, and I think it's going to be handheld, and it is a nice little leaf. I suppose in this video I'm trying to understand, is that a good way of working? Thinking of the lenses you've got on board in the bag, looking, starting with macro, then going to looking for wide, then looking at the mid ground, 24 to 70, and then keeping an eye on the distance of what's in front of you. Or is that too, too much for you, your brain to compute? Is it just easier to just look, explore, see a composition, and then match the lens to that composition? Here's the macro shot. And uh, we'll now think of moving on a little bit further down the uh, into this woodland. It really is nice. Why have I not been here before? Sneaky. Very sneaky. Yes, I'm watching you. Right, moved a bit further forward now. Helen's taking a macro shot on her iPhone. I don't think that's gonna come out, but we'll see. And this is a better position because we've got some gorse here. I think it's gorse, I'm sure it's gorse. So we can get a macro shot of that. So that gives the macro lens a job to do. We've got some, uh, I'm sure the silver birch in front of us, a little group of silver birch. That would be 24 to 70. Wide angle. Still struggling. Wide angle. And given the choice today, I would have left the wide angle lens at home coming to this location. So that's kind of working out at the minute. And uh, telephoto wise, we have got, we'd have to move a little bit left and right but we have got some subjects there that we could get a telephoto shot of. The mist is now starting to clear, it's lifting, uh, which is a shame, but we knew it wasn't gonna last forever. But yeah, so moving around, we now have jobs for most of the lenses, except big eye. Mm. So macro of the gorse, the gorse is blowing round quite a bit, but uh, we'll get that shot. So here's the macro gorse. Here's the mid-range 24 to 70 shot of these silver birch, I'm sure they are. You'll correct me if I'm not. And here's a telephoto shot of uh, probably another silver birch actually in the distance. So we have enlisted three out of the four lenses here just by thinking about things a different way. And I probably wouldn't have done that if I just rewind back. If I'd have been here walking through here, I probably wouldn't have taken the gorse with the macro. I probably would have taken the um, silver birch that group of trees there. And I might not have taken the shot uh, with telephoto. Because I think when you're walking around and exploring an area, you tend to walk through pretty quick, pretty fast, so you don't have this. Let's stop and look. So if anything, me thinking about the four lenses I've got with me, is really slowing me down. It's kind of forcing me to find a composition for each lens. One, two, three, four. Still need a wide angle though. So yeah, oh, I've just seen another one over there. There's a nice group of 
bendy trees over there. I think we'll take that one for telephoto. So standing in one spot, yeah, it's interesting this. Not done this before. We've got to move on to try and find something for the wide angle. We can't leave that out, it's not fair. It's come all this way and uh, we've not used it yet. So we'll find a wide angle shot before we, uh, before we close the video. But this place, I need to bring Eddie Skelson here because he loves woodland and he'll absolutely, um, yeah, he will absolutely get excited by this uh, environment. He really will. Just look at this fine specimen that we've uh, found. This absolutely needs a wide angle lens. So we're going to take a few shots of this with big eye. Uh, and it's a really nice, unusual tree. Look how it's grown kind of to the left and then up and sprawled out. That's a beautiful, I wish I'd have found this when the mist was around us, because that would have gave us probably the best misty shot of the day. But what a specimen. But we can come back and get this. But for now, we need to get Big Eye out. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the computer to draw a conclusion to this exercise today. And uh, yeah, I think we need to think about it a little. Think about how it felt, uh, what the results were, and was it the right approach? So we'll go back to the computer and um, when I've thought about it, I'll give you my thoughts. Right now, we're going to go back for a bacon cob, I think. Although the sun's starting to come out. Now I think we'll go back. Okay, we'll just go back to the beginning of that morning when the location was cloaked in fog and mist. And at the start of that, we were running around like headless chickens. I've got the 100 to 400 on the tripod, carrying it round, just walking and walking to capture different uh, compositions, trying to line up the trees. And uh, that was quite a hectic um, time of the morning. No time to, to film any uh, video vlog footage. And that wasn't the plan. The plan was to talk about carrying all your lenses. That was a nice surprise and um, yeah very nice surprise so I shot that on Sunday the uh, 31st of March it's now Wednesday the 3rd of April so I've had time to think about this and my conclusion is that it's a useful exercise because one it slows you down two you get a good variety of pictures and I think normally as I said in the video um, I would normally just walk find scope frame take a shot choosing the lens along the way the negative part to this I found particularly when I watch the video back is that all of a sudden I was putting myself under pressure to find a wide angle shot and whilst I was looking for that wide angle shot which we had to walk probably another 25 to 30 meters forward before we come across that very nice tree 
I felt I was forcing myself to take a shot with that lens. And that, I think, became a distraction to the photography. It became more of a process. And photography is a process, but this was very, very uh, tight. Mm. Macro as well. We often see people doing macro shoots in vlogs. Is that a specialised subject that we should focus on because we might have to have tripod upside down to get the macro shot, which means there's a lot more um, changing the equipment round. I've been out this morning doing some macro uh, bluebells because the bluebells are out and uh, I had my tripod upside down. I only took my macro lens, so I didn't take any other lens. And uh, I started to think about this video experience and I thought, God, if I was if I was taking this macro shot and then I saw something else which needed wide angle or telephoto, I'd have to reset the tripod the right way up, change it round, and it started to, to get maybe faff. Sometimes in macro, you want to focus stack. I didn't on this occasion because I felt the images, uh, I liked the way they was focusing on some of the points of the, the subject. I did find another macro image, which is this one. I'll share with you. Helen spotted this as we were walking uh, through the mist. And this looks quite nice with a green uh, background on it and the water beads. And um, Helen did struggle with macro on that uh, iPhone and she started to think about picking up a DSLR again, which was good. So let's see if I can get her into macro and get her back on that DSLR. Put that iPhone down, it's, it's, it's a phone, it's not a camera. Well, it is, but it's not a proper camera. So what do you think about this experience that I've shown you in this video? It might be good for people learning photography to actually slow yourself down and yeah, let's take this shot, that shot, let's use this lens, that lens. I don't know, I'm gonna go out again, uh, not straight away, because I've got some other shoots to do. And I'm gonna follow the same process and, and see how I get on. Uh, it was well worthwhile doing, but it's not instantly grabbed me as a, as a way of working. I think I'm far comfortable uh, far more relaxed, just exploring, checking out the environment, seeing a composition and taking it. I do feel it was very process driven. We've got to stand here, look for the macro shot, look for the wide shot, look for the mid range, look for the telephoto, very process driven. That might work for some people, some people might need that to discipline the photography because they might be shooting all over the place. So it might help some people, I don't know. So I suppose my overall conclusion with this is I'm sitting on the fence. And on that note, we'll, uh, we'll end the video and I'll, uh, I'll put up some of Helen's macro shots and uh, we'll finish on my favourite shot from this shoot. The wide angle shots of the tree by the way, I weren't that enthused by them but I thought I'd share them. Um, no, I want that excited. That tree needs a lot more work uh, with big eye to get uh, a better result. Thank you for watching. Thank you if you're a subscriber. Subscribe if you like this content. Give the video a like. Share the video. Is somebody struggling with their photography? Could this video help them or put them off photography? <laughs> On that note, I'll see you later.